Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to Compound Fracture Plays Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Look at our TV station. Look at it. We're going to press play and you can look at it. It's so beautiful. We got it. We got we got a steel mill back here, like hanging out. We got a we got a food factory back here hanging out. And we got like all this media to like brainwash our citizens. My, I don't mean brainwash. I mean, educate them properly um, in how to in how to love me. Um, it's interesting that the, the, the TV audience is much larger than the radio audience, which is good because the TV has a much better rating. So, yeah. Only like 40 listeners now in the radio. Now the TV's taking over as being the popular, popular thing. All the cool kids are watching the TV. Radio is old news, Grandpa. Yes, it is. So this construction's going well. Once this is done, we should have no more fear of famine. Famine will be yesterday's problem. And we'll need a distribution office as well. We haven't built that yet. It should be right next to this cargo station, though. I think. So let's do that now. Um, I don't know if we should make it a medium one or a large one. Or, or sorry, a small one or a large one. The real question is whether we expect this um, this little warehouse area to be pulling from farms or whether we just want it delivering to towns and having the farms get their own stuff. And I think the solution is actually to have it pull. I think the solution is to have a big distribution office and we can always not use all the slots. We don't need them. That's fine. So, um, 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 warehousing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Medium distribution office. Okay, we got some flattening that needs to be done up here. Let's show the wireframe. Make sure we know what we're doing. Okay, distribution office. I noticed you can flatten under power lines. I didn't think you used to be able to do that. Like, they seem to have... Like, look at this. I even built this warehouse. It's, like, underneath these power lines. I think that's a new thing. I don't think you used to be able to build right up to power lines like that. I might be wrong, though, but... I seem to remember it being more of a pain in the ass in the past, so that's nice. Good stuff. So we can flatten starting here, and then we can kind of work our way over. And that looks just fine to me. Good stuff. Okay. Now, let's get the economy flowing again. Our total amount owed is still just a little bit less than $1,900,000. So that's good. It's like right at the same place it was like uh, three and a half hours ago when I started playing. So it's good that it's not getting any worse. Meanwhile, our city's getting better. So we are indeed not falling into a hole of unlimited debt. Shackleford's doing okay. It stopped constructing things now because I haven't built the roads uh, that I should have built already. So let's put that one in so that starts up. Um, then we can think about how we want this town to look. I think I want hospitals and stuff right around here. So let's let's start looking at that stuff. Uh, we're going to use our mod hospital. It's one of the mod buildings we always use because it is two roads instead of one. And two roads are much, much better than one in this case. The one road clogs up like a son of a bitch. So let's put that in right here. Like that, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's a hospital. Our fire station's coming along quite well. It's not done yet, but it's getting there. Um, and we're going to want a kindergarten and a, and a school. So how is how are these roads going to look? Let's think in terms of think roadly thoughts here. I think if we put the school like like this, and then the kindergarten like this, then we can uh, continue the asphalt road. Is that? Is that really how we want it? I don't think it is. I think we want a road way out here. And if we want a road way out here, I think that means we want these to move out a bit. 
make a little bit more sense that way. So let's let's try this again. We'll hold the control key to make sure it doesn't build any any roads that aren't quite perfect for us. And we'll put it like here so that there's room for walking paths. Something like that. And then we'll do the same with the school. Put it here. Um, maybe like yeah, here. And then uh, we can do a ten like a football field, maybe. Right there. Oh, we need a pub. We don't have a pub in this town yet. Every town needs a pub. So we'll put a pub here instead. That seems good to me. Okay. Now let's make sure there's enough room for paths all around this area. We want one there. Oh, huh. forgot about the road. Oops. Let's do some more flattening so we can get this road built a little bit better. Need a free bulldozer. No, all our bulldozers are busy. Oh, man. Okay, well, we'll have to come back to that later, I guess. Or we could just, like, eh, turn on auto build for a second. Oh, no, maybe not. Let's not do that. Here come the bulldozers. I think they were both getting fuel. So now they're both home. Okay, so we can continue doing this. We built them at the same time, so they probably needed fuel at the same time. Sometimes the game goes like that. Be nice to have more than two uh, within range of this to make it go a bit faster, but whatever. So I think that's good. Actually, I'm gonna uh, I'm get the get it stretched out a little bit more, just like right locally here, so we can make that road a bit longer. I think that's probably enough. I think we kind of wanted to go straight out this way, actually, like just straight, straight. So let's just put a mud road in like this for now so that the game will recognize we want a corner. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? No, it isn't. Okay, you know what? Fine, we'll destroy a little bit of our, of our proper asphalt road in order to rebuild it better and stronger than ever. And then uh, put this one out like this. Then put this one over like that. Then we can demolish uh, this bit here and this bit here. Cool. Now uh, we just need mud roads, uh, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to build these asphalt roads first. And I am going to tell this one... Oh, no, it's, it's, it's one construction site the whole way around. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what we were hoping to see. I am going to tell it to rush uh, this little bit here. And we need to uh, we need to be thinking about how this is going to work on this side. It is going to work. That's great. I kind of want it to be uh, gravel, though. I want this to be gravel. So let's let's make this gravel, like that, and then straight across like that, and then like that. Start construction. Seems good. Oh, how long have we been out of money? Oh, a long time. That's bad. Sixty-five thousand overdue. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's happening here? Oh, no. Not connected with road. Wait, what? Uh-oh. Oh, it's because it's trying to build a road. And it's not... What? So it's these guys. Okay, where are you going? You're going to Shackleford School. Oh, I see what happened. It's because I had a road connecting Shackleford School over here. Um... Oh, no. Um, what if I tell it to suspend construction of these things for now?
If I do that, do these things disappear? Yes, they do. Look at that. Look at that. Problem solved. Okay. No more question marks. No more doubt. Now let's resume construction because uh, as soon as we have the, um, the roads in place, we're going to want it to start right away. Might not have wanted to hook up this gravel road quite yet. Uh, split it into two construction projects here, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. Oh, and our heating plant's done. Well, that's nice. So we need to get some coal infrastructure going here. Um, I wonder. I think, I think we just use our main distribution office here. We have room for one more dump truck. I am going to buy one more dump truck now that we have, like, this far-off coal thing that we're trying to deliver to as well. So let's, uh, let's hook that up. It is snowing now. We need to just take a peek at our heat, heat and snowplow infrastructure and make sure it's up to the task. Building's already assigned, really? Okay, well, sure. 80% um, full. That'd be good. Snowplow seem to be doing their job. How about heating? How's heating going? That's important. No workers! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's because all the workers are being stolen by the dastardly TV station. Um, are there workers on their way right now? Where are these buses going? This is going to the right place, and it is seven workers, so we should get some in soon. Hopefully people are not yet freezing to death. That would be a good thing. We want to avoid the freezing to death, if at all possible. Yeah, all the buildings are still at 24 degrees Celsius, so that's what we want to see. Meanwhile, the bus will be there soon. They've been, this particular round of buses was slowed down by the snowfall before the plows got out there. So here come a couple people. Everything's starting to fall. Look, it's all hitting 20 degrees. 20 degrees is still okay. And now that the workers are in, it's back up to 24. So this pressure should, should build here, or this is the, the temperature of the steam. Uh, running through our pipelines, or steam pipes. So it's moving, moving its way back up to 90 degrees Celsius, which is where we want it. So that's okay. We did not have any big problems associated with that. And we have 17 workers there now. It's just that all the buses are bunched up. What else is new? They all get trapped behind the first snow plow, you know? First plow of the season is always a pain for the bus lines. Fire station's done. As soon as we start getting people moving in here, we'll immediately, and we'll do it in the summer. We're not going to build any residential areas here until the temperatures recover. Um, but we'll start uh, getting um, one or two little orange buses up to this stop just to man these two buildings specifically. And that'll work really nicely. Meanwhile, we're getting work done on our, our new warehouse district. It's going quite well. We'll have three warehouses worth of food stored all the time here. And we'll no longer have to import any food at all. Time for more money. 1850 owed. It's getting better and better. Slowly, slowly our debt is decreasing. How's the steel doing? We haven't checked this in a while. Okay, so the open storage is now at 60% full. I think we can afford to up this train back up to 20% export instead of 10% for a while. It's too bad we have to, like, tweak these numbers a lot. It would be nice to have some more control over telling it not to load up. Like, the only way to get really fine control about uh, how much you're exporting and how much you're, you're keeping internal is with things like forklifts and with, like, secondary storage bits. So you'd want to export from one of these storage areas rather than from the steel mill itself. And then that'll sort of like allow you to sort of, you know, push the production multiple directions. But as long as you just have a train sitting in the station like this, it can be really hard to, to get any sort of fine control over it, unfortunately. Oh, by the way, our, our, I'm sure our cross section here has been done for a very long time. 
I'm going to hit pause for, for a minute, and we're going to just get, get these rail lines configured the way we want them permanently. So I'm going to take out this cross, cross section. We don't need this anymore. Destroy that. Now we get, we get to deal with semaphores. So let's, let's turn these off, um, and let's turn these off. And uh, we'll go from there, shall we? Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um, I think we want two stretches here. We want to put one here like this. Uh, one way and one way, and then one more right before the bridge. One way and one way, okay. Then right after the bridge. Okay. Uh, can we fit two more in here? Probably, yeah. Two more spans. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do this one first. Um, so in this case, we want a chain right before that seam. And a normal one like here. And then um, here we just want... Uh, we want mixed, actually. Oops, not there. Right there. Like that and like that. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then one more halfway between these two. So like somewhere around here. And it's all done. Now we have a, a two-way stretch of track going all the way through with two berths at the border. And I'm keeping the third one free for a reason. I, I might use the third berth to just do some little like freight loading station here so that we can have vehicle exports happening, but just with a little train intermediary or something like that. Uh, makes it more historically accurate. The planned economy was only as good as the reports underlings made. Uh, they lied a lot. Sure, yeah, that's true. Um, now I could get I could get really into the weeds and talk about how uh, that's kind of the trouble when you replace um, you know grassroots democracy with uh, top-down authoritarianism. Um, these uh, planned economy systems were certainly originally designed to be. Uh, as much as possible um, to have the decisions made at local levels, you know? Uh, make as many decisions as you can at the, at the, uh, the smallest form of government possible. And uh, that way you'd have, y you wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't have some overseer who controls your destiny that you must lie to. You know, it would be, it would be the people doing the actual work making the decisions, and that would be nice, you know? Don't want to get too into the weeds about Soviet philosophy, but, but that's certainly a thing. Top-down top down government forms don't really work very well with planned economies, as it turns out. There's the famous example about how in the early days of the Soviet Union, they had a, a, a terrible bra shortage because they were trying to get like peacetime factory production up and running. And it was like a whole lot of old men sitting in a room making decisions about what these new factories were going to produce. And nobody remembered that it's actually quite important to produce bras. So such a basic like necessity of life as a bra. And you couldn't find them anywhere for a while because the old men had not decided to make them. Which is very sad. But that's what happens when you don't have... Uh, the actual customers, the actual consumers of society's goods making the decision about what to produce. As you would if it was democratic. Oh well, oh well. Maybe next time there's a socialist revolution, we'll do better. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um... I like that. And then we can have this kind of come up here, maybe. Oh, is it not going to work? Because that road's kind of screwy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Um, can we do this at all? Like, is this going to, like, completely derail me? Because I really do want to have a path that can go through here. Like, that's part of the reason we planned it the way we did. We wanted to make sure that there was plenty of room for footpaths. What? Oh, right, it's because this building sticks out way farther than it visually appears to. Oh, no. So we can't actually have a footpath connecting that way. Is that okay? Are we all right despite that? Do we have to rebuild things? I think we're all right despite that. I think we're okay with, with the way it is. 
Because so we can do that, and then... Yeah, this is fine. This will be okay. This, this, this is not, not the end of the world. Hayek won a Nobel Prize um, by proving that Mrs. was right, that the problem with centrally planned economy isn't so much character or social resistance, but merely the fact that it's impossible to act accurately compute value. Yes. And that's why I think actually that, um, I mean, I agree with that. I, I agree that that's one of, one of the problems uh, and probably the biggest problem uh, historically. But I think where we have a huge advantage in that today is technology. Um, for instance, I'll give an example, and this is an old example, right? It's like very, very old news. I'm not sure how much it holds up these days, but back when I back when I learned about this, um, would have been about 15 years ago, and at the time, Walmart had the second most powerful computer system in the world at their central headquarters. The only the only computer system more powerful more powerful than Walmart's system was the U.S. military in the Pentagon, right? And so um, they had just designed this, this crazy supercomputer in order to be able to track every single good and every single purchase at every single Walmart all throughout the world, all in real time. And when they built this thing, they found that they were able to predict a lot more interesting things about people's consumption habits than um, like, like a lot of things that no one predicted. And for example, um, it turns out that in Florida, this is the example that some magazine article used. In Florida, when there's a hurricane in the forecast, right, uh, people, it turns out, buy a whole lot of Pop-Tarts. Because I guess Pop-Tarts are just this comfort food that never goes bad and you can eat in a hurricane and all that sort of stuff. You don't need to cook them if you don't have to. And they're comfortable. They're, they're, they're a nice kind of norm normalcy kind of thing. So people buy, buy Pop-Tarts when they expect a hurricane. So as a result, uh, if you walk into a Walmart in uh, Florida and there's a hurricane expected, the, sh the shelves will be filled with Pop-Tarts. And it used to be that Walmarts would run out of Pop-Tarts if there was a hurricane, but no longer. Because um, being able to track all the goods that way allows for great predictions of consumption, uh, even with a whole lot of, of weird variables like natural disasters taken into account. So, like, we could most definitely track uh, all of the consumption habits of people. And now the trick, the trick to understand, I think, about planning for what sorts of items would be produced, which I think is the other part of the problem you're getting at there, is uh, that that could be quite, you know, okay, one thing we have to understand, if there's a planned economy, there will be waste, right? Uh, I think there would be a lot less waste than there is in a capitalist economy. Capitalism has just ludicrous amounts of waste. Um, but there would absolutely be waste. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you'd have to have some sort of a system whereby people could introduce new products to the market, right? Um, oh, here we go. It's because we don't have an unload. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so there would have to be a, a means of... Um, of, of like allowing creative people to to introduce new concepts new new types of products and then there would have to be a way to measure public response to those products so part of that could be tracking how well sales do in stores you know how many people are are purchasing and and it would still be purchasing i mean people have used different different uh different types of um different types of currencies like you know the early soviet union they talked about work vouchers replacing currency but it was essentially the same it's like a a way of saying uh this is the amount of goods i'm i i, I can expect or whatever so so you track the purchases that people make and figure out what's popular and what isn't but you'd also want to have some means of uh allowing people to give direct input as to what they like and what they don't and again, that's where I think you see a lot of examples in modern, uh, modern technological capitalism that really, really, um, oh, what am I doing? I want to load and unload here. That's right. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, for instance, you know, Amazon reviews or um, any sort of, a, any sort of a, a, an online sales site has reviews built into it, right? 
So you'd have to build some sort of a system that replaces the, uh, the demand models of capitalism, right? The supply demand of capitalism. Um, you'd have to replace that with democratic mechanisms instead. And I think it's totally possible to do that today. It would have been much, much more difficult before computers were what they are now. That's for sure. Anyway, I'm getting off in the weeds a lot here. So what, you ha what we have now that passes as capitalism is extremely wasteful. However, the source of the current waste isn't capitalism, but consumerism. See now, I think that's very strange to me. Um, like, like that set of logic doesn't make too much sense to me. Um, you know, and obviously economics is super complicated and we're not going to agree on everything and all that. And I, I really like that you're, uh, that we're having this conversation. It's a topic I enjoy too. Um, but, uh, I, I think that, that capitalism at its heart relies on, uh, extracting ever increasing amounts of profit because investment requires not just steady return, but increasing return in order to multiply the investment, the invested capital, you know? So, um, in fact, it does need to consistently expand even when there's no natural demand at that level, which is inherently wasteful. You know, if, if an industry it can, requires constant growth when, when the demand doesn't necessarily justify the growth, there will be waste. And then we see the ways it deals with that waste doing things like destroying excess uh, capacity, right? So like the food industry is a great example. We produce way more food than we need to survive. So in order to keep up the demand levels, uh, food waste will be done on purpose. Food will be destroyed. Um, but it needs to happen that way so that the, the supply of food can continue to expand to continue, cause, cause like even individual farmers, right? An individual farmer is not going to produce less crops next year if we need less stuff next year. They're, they're, they're not going to cut into their own bottom line that way, right? So no one's going to decrease production. So we find other ways to waste shit. Anyway, I'm getting long-winded now, but, but that's, that's the gist. The real definition of capitalism, if it's in a single sentence, really. Here I thought it was a complex economic form, but I, I stand corrected, I guess. I'm curious. I'm curious to know what the definition is. Okay, I'm going to put it in another flat while I wait for that definition and we'll put it put it here. Yeah, that looks good to me. a lot of schools of economics coming up with their own absolutely and i find often the older ones are the better ones you know we, we seem to attach a lot of layers of, of, of abstraction to our definitions these days often okay so there's going to be another flat um i think all of our housing is currently full in this town um, by the time spring and summer hits, we're going to be building up the next town. So I'm not super worried about continuing a breakneck pace of housing construction here. Uh, I guess I'll put in a couple more on the other side of this, this, uh, TV station, but I'm starting to worry about how far away these things are from the hospital and the school university. I guess we should probably have education buses. Oh no, we have zero students waiting, so we don't need education buses right now. An economic system in which all trades are voluntary, in which coercion is immoral. Okay, so, so you do understand, Finboy, that the need to uh, sell your labor in order to provide food and... Oh no, I ran out of disk space! Oh shit. That just means I'm going to have to, like... Uh, trim this in post it's not fun not fun for me it adds another headache um i forgot to check my disk space oh well um right so like you do know that that, that coercion is 
inherently the way that we get people to uh, sell their labor uh, for various tasks that they wouldn't choose to do on their own. Like that is coercion. Um, the idea that you must work or you're not going to have a home or food, that's coercion. That's what it is. There's really no other, other way to, to put it, no other thing to call it. So I'm going to put more flats in here. Okay. Okay, that seems pretty good, I think. So let's continue our, our road. Oh, it looks like this is ending at a really bad place. So I'll demolish a little bit of that already constructed road, unfortunately. Gotta do what we gotta do. That's a bit better. Uh, we do need to take out this path for the same reason. I do. I wish we'd waited a bit to put that in, because now we're going to have real trouble making this work. So let's go there, and then there. And then we'll make sure that there's enough space. Here there is, and here there is. Okay. Now we'll put this path back in where it was, exactly where it was, because we didn't end up moving that at all. Uh, I'll jackhammer this bit of road here. It's not necessary at the moment. And then we will tell it to start building. Good stuff. Um, okay. Very short ar article by, by Mrs. I, I see, I don't know who that person is. It'd be, I'd be interested in knowing, though. Um, yeah, I mean, you could link it if you want, or PM it, or, or anything. I'll, I'll take a skim through, for sure. I have a feeling, though, that if it's coming to those type of conclusions, it's probably of a uh, bent that I'm not going to agree with, I would imagine. That doesn't mean I won't give it a chance, you know. The best the best things to find and the best things to read are the things that you expect to disagree with, but that end up convincing you of something. So certainly, certainly give it a chance. Okay, where are we? Um, so... Oh, this disk space thing is bumming me out. It means I need to spend time in Adobe Premiere, and the whole reason I record, like, snappy little intros and stuff while I'm playing is so that I don't have to spend time in Adobe Premiere. That's what we want to avoid, people, not 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 fill our time with. That's okay. Could be a whole lot worse. But I should see if I can solve this disk space problem. What I really need to do is do the thing that I always intend to do and check my disk space before I start recording. Uh, that's That's the smart way around these things. And I'm always caught between wanting to keep a backlog on my hard drive just in case something goes wrong, um, but also really not wanting to use that much space <laughs> for videos. Like, I don't have that much hard drive space in general, and I record very high quality con like very high, high quality videos, so it's not the best. Okay. Yeah, um, well, I certainly do know my history. Um, it's very, very complex. Um, the, the question of, how do, how do I say this? Um, conditions in the Soviet bloc behind the Iron Curtain were really shit. <laughs> First off, you know, the, 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 there's no excuse for famines and no apologizing that anyone should ever do for the famines. That's, that's bloody bullshit when people try. Uh, it's also very complex, though. It's, um... 
it, it's a it's a hodgepodge of things that were done to hold power mixed with things that were done legitimately for the good of people and it can be very difficult to see where the one ends and the other begins sometimes looking through a historical lens and that's especially true since all of our history was was written uh our history of that era uh the canon right that you'll find in university was, was typically written during the mccarthy era or is based on ideas from the mccarthy era and Western academia, academia was very, very biased in that time. And it led to some really pit, like piss poor analysis, frankly, that continues to hold up to this day within the canons of academia. Unfortunately, it's too bad. Moved to the US after his life work was destroyed, ended up producing even more. Literally the father of the Austrian school. Oh, I get it, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't think too highly of the Austrian school in general. Okay. <laughs> Maybe worth revisiting, I suppose. Um, I think normally when I've seen sources like that trying to define capitalism, I've, I've, I've read it and then I've chuckled to myself for a few minutes and then moved on with my life. And it's hard to remember things when you're just chuckling at them for a few minutes. Um, but I mean, Again, like it's it's a really good thing to have a wide breadth of knowledge and uh, to understand all the various sources that people go by. So it is a very good idea for me to read that stuff, even if I suspect I know how it's going to go. But I might be wrong, too, you know? There's always room for being wrong. Okay. Okay, so what was our problem here? It was getting getting through this little gap. We wanted to get a path through here, but it was going to be impossible. And it still is, so let's just give up on that now. Can we do a path here? That's not it. Huh. What are you again? You're a kindergarten. Hmm. Well, whatever. They'll walk around, I guess. Um, we do need a cinema here, since we don't actually... Like, we could bus people to the other cinema. That's an option. Probably worth just building one, though. So, like... I think in the end, Shackleford will be, like, a two-store town. Probably. Um, so we'll probably want a cinema next to the hospital, kind of in the middle ground, between where the two stores and bus stations will be. So, uh, let's put it right here. So, cinema. I don't think we've built any fields yet, have we? That's, that's an important thing not to overlook. No, exactly, yeah. Understanding, um, not just understanding different views, but having a sense of the sources for those views, right? The, the, um, too many, too many things, I think, are, uh, um, kind of removed from their initial context, you know? Like, there's a lot of ideas that, um, without understanding where they come from, it's, it's really hard to get any sort of sense of, of what they are or what they truly represent. Believe me, I am a lover of knowing what the fuck you're talking about before you say things. <laughs> so I always want to be the guy who knows what the fuck he's talking about, not the guy who's, uh, you know, going based on guesswork and half-remembered something, you know? Okay, that's not good. I don't like the way that path looks. No, don't demolish the building, you madman. Okay, um... Too sharp a turn, really. Okay, so we have to do it that way. 
All right, so it's fine then. No money again. I'm getting, uh, I'm distracting myself with like uh, economics talk and forgetting about the little fiddly bits of the game that I need to be paying attention to here. Uh oh. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Really? You're not gonna let me do that? I guess that's okay. I don't care. I don't care that much. Got enough entrances as it is, and we can do uh, one behind the cinema here. Mm. Okay. Doesn't rely on opinion. Um, I'm sorry, but but that's that's just wrong. Like everyone, 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 everyone has biases that go into their data sets. Uh, you you cannot remove bias from the equation when you're talking about something as complex and as chaotic as a system of economic production. Um, the biases do show through for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's a very, very good thing to try to be objective. But trying to be objective and being truly objective are different things. Meanwhile, what's going on over here? I haven't been paying much attention, and I should be, because this is important. Um, right, we need to tell it to pick up from the farm. Uh, so, office tasks, pick up from the farmhouse, please. Uh, load food starting at 0%. Now we're going to tweak these ones. Uh, these ones we still want being our export trucks because the border's right there, and these trucks are, are doing nothing unless it's harvest season, so they might as well. But we do not want them delivering to the food warehouses anymore. Um, I mean, we should leave it on for now because we, we don't want to, like, have people starving while the switchover happens. Um, but we're going to tell it to only pick up from the food factory at, like, 50% storage percentage, maybe 60%, so only when the factory fills up. And that, that will probably work. Yeah. Pretty well-defined opinions. Um, yeah, bias is integral to research. It absolutely is. I, I'm sorry, I, Finboy, I will never, I will never believe that anything within the field of socioeconomics at all can be free from bias. It's, it's just, it's just the way it is. And I think, um, I think oftentimes, um, choosing not to acknowledge bias where it exists is the root of, uh, allowing bias to take over. Um, I think it's important, very, very important to, uh, to recognize and uh, our biases, no matter what we're doing, so that we can correct for them, you know, so that we can... Um... Okay, good. This is going well. Um, I'm just noticing here. We're getting good, good resources readings from here, despite the fact that there's no power. We don't need power, I don't think, for any of this. I'm going to hit limit amount, and I'm just going to, like, kill everything that's not food, just to make sure we don't make a mistake here. This is purely food storage, so that we'll no longer have to import food between seasons. And we can make sure that our grocery stores have a very steady supply. Okay, and uh, the other one's not done, so that's fine. Okay, so these trucks should be out picking up food, probably. Where are we at here? We are producing food, and, and look at all these trucks. Uh, what are you doing? Your export, you are going to the, the warehouse, good. And you're exporting as well. Okay, sure. These export trucks won't go out. Did I do both of these or just one? Oh, I did just one, that's why. We'll actually crank that up to 70%, especially since the distribution offices are right here. So they will only start doing anything with this if it gets hits like 70%, which is about 20 tons or so. Then they'll start sending out the trucks to grab it. 
meanwhile, these trucks should be pretty steadily streaming out, I think, but it doesn't seem to be happening that way, so that's confusing. This might be a bad way to do it. Maybe I'm going to have to adjust this. We'll see. Food, food. Oh, wait. Wait, what did I do here? Add, uh... I think I've, I've really screwed something up, haven't I? Because I, I don't have the, the road cargo station at all. How did that happen? That's weird. Okay, so unload up to 100%, please, or 90%, whatever. And you can load as low as zero... As low as zero percent, sure. So... So basically, these trucks should be out all the time picking up food from from the factory. Oh man, how how is this going to make sense? I think we might need we might need two different distribution networks here. I don't know. Let's let's let it run for a while and we'll see how this works. We'll see how much these fill up. I think I might just not be doing this quite right here. All right, more iron. Now, the train, um, it is still at 20% export. That's okay, that's fine, it's good enough. I don't know what to do here. I, I'm... I think I might switch it up so that the, uh... Well, I mean, these are all doing stuff right now. I mean, what, it, what should be happening here, right, is, um... They're loading from the food factory, or also from the cargo station. And unloading either at local warehouses or at the cargo station. So this should set up a float where once any food gets gets into these, these warehouses here, it will no longer be part of the system that exports food. And it should build up some sort of a reserve supply here, assuming we have enough production to fuel that. The other option would be uh, only exporting from here, which, you know, that might be a smarter move. Huh. Need more money again. I'm really losing myself in the weeds right now, like looking at this, thinking about this warehouse logic and uh, missing missing out on other stuff here. That's okay. Uh, exporting some steel, that's good. Let, let, let's take a peek at the other stuff. How's the other stuff going? How's the, how's the uh, town of Shackleford making out? It's doing okay. Kindergarten, pub, school, cinema. Need some fields, clearly. Fields and, and housing, and then that's it. It's now March, so I feel okay about starting construction on some uh, some flats, getting some people moved in here. I think we're at that point. So let's uh, let's start building them along the road here. Why not, right? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this kind of a setup here. Gonna have to remove this little path. Let's see. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Ooh, very sexy. Very, very sexy indeed. And then we can put a. Uh, this will be just the edge of town for forevermore. We don't need to worry about expanding that way. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any space for, for a footpath to attach here, which is too bad. I'd like to have uh, sports facilities in the back. We can still do that, though. Let's do it this way. It's not quite perfect, but but we'll, we'll make this work. So, um, football field. Put it like this. Right here. Cool. Now we'll have paths going through the back. And actually, let's do another row of buildings before we start thinking about more paths. Residential buildings, flats. Okay. And just one more. Let's make sure we have enough space to do this the way we did the other one. Yes, we do. Perfect. Uh, now, we'll do one more, uh, one more little playground here, football playground. Just like that. And then we want to come up the middle here with the pathway. Looks good to me. Um, can we connect anywhere over here with a path? Seems important. Seems like we might not have enough, enough space, though. Well, we can go this way, right? Yeah, that's fine. We'll have to be good enough. Just too bad we can't actually connect with any of these, uh, these entrances in the back here. But oh well. That's what we get for, uh, being so tight with our construction here. I do like tight, though. Tight's the way to be, I think. Can we not go underneath the pipes? Seriously? Well, that's annoying. I thought we had enough space there, but I guess not. No. No, they're right at, it's right at ground level. Oh, well. I don't have any preference at all. Uh, just link it however you want. Um, should be able to just send me a, a PM, eh? A private message. Should work. I could also throw it in the chat and I could pull it off there too. Doesn't really make a difference. Okay. This could be a lot better, but you know, people will be able to access these fields, at least on this side of town. And there's only two of them. Could definitely be a whole lot sexier, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine! Okay, cool. So I'm going to take another loan. And you know what? As I look at our growing town of Shackleford, I realize that we're at about the hour mark. I don't have a recording happening, so I'm not sure exactly how long we've been recording, but I think it's about an hour. So I think this is the end of this here episode of Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This has been episode number 24. Wow, so many episodes. Goodbye, YouTube. Catch you soon.